Today I just want to do a quick summary between a Teltonica Taubrauter and a Nighthawk M2, 5 or 6 modem. Keep it simple, keep it real. Now this is a question we actually do get quite a lot on the phone. Why do we, well how does the Teltonica router that we sell compared, compared to the Nighthawk M5 or the Nighthawk M6 six right now? Um, now it doesn't really matter what Teltonica people are referring to on the phone, they normally just think about the general capability, but I'm specifically going to think in my mind about the RUT360, such as the one that I have here in my hand. Um, and then of course I have a, a prop, which is the, um, the older Nighthawk M, M2 with me, but the, the functionality is, is to, in terms of connections and ports and stuff is the same, and the form factor is also the same. I'll explain to you in a few minutes. Um, so in this video I just want to cover things like antennas, which is a big thing, but I'll come to that at the end. Um, just want to look, look at the type of product and the type of technology that it could support. The first thing is, what type of product is it? So you definitely have two distinct differences. If you look at the, the, the two products, this one is industrial grade, this is the RUT360, but all the um, Teltonica products is industrial grade, and the um, Nighthawk M whatever is consumer grade. Now, first of all, what that means, if you can, you can um, imagine, when you um, have a setup in remote places or you want something to remain working 24-7, basically every time, a device that is industrial grade is designed that with the focus to stay reliable and stay on board. That's really it. You don't want to go there and just reset your modem every now and again if it's critical services, depending on the connectivity of this type of device. Consumer grade, and I'm just coming in as a person that knows what it's like at home, my NBN, when I still have NBN, which I now disconnected, I'm on 5G at home. That's not a relevant topic for this video, but I just wanted to mention that. I'm so used to actually having to reset your modem every now and again, maybe once a day at worst, otherwise once a week, things just seem to go confused. That's fine, we're used to that, but that's not acceptable in industrial grade, but in consumer grade, that's the kind of approach that the manufacturers seem to anticipate we are okay with. Um, then the other thing, of course, is because of that design focus, this type of device, the Teltonicas, they have slower and faster models, fair enough, but the focus is not on getting the latest and greatest performance. So it's not leading edge performance, it's more getting the technology that you have really sorted out well before you go to market with the product. That's what we see on the 5G device where it is slightly later than what all the other consumer products is because they don't believe that it's mature enough to present to the market yet. Consumer great, and I'm like that when I, when I don't wear an RF shop or black art technology hat. You don't want to see what is the latest thing like. You really want to see, can this work, can this work? There's a price for that. That, that really is quick to market. Quick to market means it's not necessarily 100% sorted yet. That will come with some firmware or software updates later on. That's a consumer approach and it's fine. I mean, I'm not criticizing because as I say, I sell industrial grade, I use consumer grade. I'm on two, two sides of the scale, I understand what it's like to be a consumer as well. Um, now, what else is there? Uh, battery power, of course, this one has its own battery. This one, the Nighthawks, and this is again, I'm the M2 in my hand, but the 5 and the 6, they all have the same funk feature which is awesome for a lot of users so you basically will have a compact device you can charge and take with you wherever you go and you don't have to worry about where can I plug in my device so that I can get an internet connection running. On a Teltonica or an industrial router you do need a power supply somewhere however it is awesome to note that these devices are designed to work from anything from 9 to 30 volt and some models have an even bigger voltage range so if you have a compact battery you can still take this with you. If you want to charge this or plug this into your vehicle at your car, 12 volt, that's going to work. If you have a 24 volt system somewhere else, you can plug it into the same device without any questions. So there are advantages as well to this one, but it doesn't have that ultimate portability that a night walk would have. Um, that's all I can say about that. And there's one little side comment that I would say, if you talk about routers versus modems and that whole conversation, a night talk such as this one, this is the M2, only has one ethernet port. Yes, it is a router by definition if what's happening on the electronics on the inside, but you only have one connection that you can make with a cable. Of course, multiple devices for Wi-Fi, so that is handy. 
Teltonica devices, on the other hand, this is now even the basic one, only has two ports, but there's models that have four and even more Ethernet ports available. So there's a lot of routing that's already happening inside this device. So you can have multiple cable devices connected to this without having to buy an additional switch to route the device the, um, or switch the um, traffic to various devices. Of course, it also supports multiple um, multiple Wi-Fi devices at the same time on one device and you're talking about tens if not 20 of devices. Now the big thing for Wi-Fi first of all just before I get into the antennas you um, have to look at the data sheet what Wi-Fi standard is supported in a Teltonica device because they they don't have one size fits all they have lower or higher levels of Wi-Fi functionality supported by the devices. The um, claim to fame for the latest Wi-Fi um, Night Talks M5 and M6 is to say yes this is Wi-Fi 6 so that is the latest version that is available and that is pretty fast but again that comes at the risk that it may not be 100% stable yet which will be solved at later times. This one, the Teltonica, stability is key. So make sure that what you do is going to last and can stay working for as long as you can. Big thing for me though, this is the antenna side. So first of all, on the Wi-Fi side, there's only internal Wi-Fi antennas on an iTalk. That's what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. If the Wi-Fi is not ideal, the Wi-Fi is not ideal. There's nothing you can do about it to make it any different. However, with a Teltonica device, it comes without any antennas connected or embedded to it. So it comes in the box. So it is part of your kit. So when you buy it, you definitely get Wi-Fi antennas, but it is two nice Wi-Fi antennas. Nice, I mean, it's proper dipole antennas. That means these are already pretty good, actually. Um, I dare say, better than internal antennas because I know where my antenna is radiating. I know if I have it like this, I'm going to have coverage to the left and to the right, forward and back because it's an Omni antenna. I can make stuff happen so that I can control how this thing has a strong, have a stronger signal in the direction that I want it to go. Also, you can replace the connections, you can place the antenna and you can do something else. You can have a higher power antenna, you can put the antenna somewhere else where you want it. So that's a massive plus for me in terms of using a device that has external and completely customizable antennas available to use. Another big one, and I'm leaving this for last, so if you dropped off, those who don't watch this part anymore, you're dropping off at the most awesome part of this video. The um, 4G antennas, of course, is a big thing. Now, it is well known that you can get external antennas connected to a night talk as well by lifting the, the clap, uh, which I'm struggling to do. There you go. And you have your TS9 port. Uh, if I can get it on screen, I can't because it focuses on my face. <laughs> um, anyway. You can get external antennas and they always work well for a night talk. So that is a very good feature to use when you go camping or when you go remote. You can put an external antenna with a TS9 connector. They're a little bit fragile, but that's okay. We can work with that to connect to a TS9, uh, to the um, night talk. However, on a Teltonica device, first of all, it only has two external antenna ports. So it starts off by saying, you have to use proper external antennas. Now, again, this is this is this is not the same. There's the Wi-Fi ones. These ones are Mark Mobile, so you will know these are actually for the 4G connection. Um, they are good, and you can do the same as with the Wi-Fi. You can set them up so that you know, okay, these are working well. And now you can understand this is dead easy to replace these with another antenna, with an external X-Pol 2 or an Omni antenna that you can put on the roof, so that's the um, Marine M4, uh, AOA M4G, the Alpha Omnis that we have on our website, to make a nice distributed or a proper MIMO system on your roof, on your car, on your vehicle, on your boat. There's another thing though. A lot of these devices, and now I'm not just talking about Night Talk, I've seen this on um, very popular um, the Huawei B818 and many of the new 5G devices as well. You get two external antenna ports, yet they say it's a 4x4 MIMO. You get two external antenna ports, sometimes they say, well, 4G and 5G is two different radios with two different antenna ports, uh, two different sets of antennas. If you only get two antenna ports going out, you don't know what is routed to the outside and what is kept on the inside. And there's no general rule that I could say it's always going to be this or it's always going to be that. It's a little bit of guessing and it also is something that is controlled by the manufacturer because it's not part of a standard to say you must have your external antenna ports to cover this frequency or that frequency or it has to do everything. They just tell you 
um, there's two antenna external external antenna ports you can use. In this case, you have two external antenna ports. I know there are actually four 4G antennas in these devices. And I know that some of the antennas are tuned for a certain frequency band, some of the antennas are tuned for another frequency band. If you connect an external antenna to the external antenna, you connect it to that part of the design. If that's not what your network is using, it's going to not have a significant, or it's not going to have any impact for you as a user. Because you have this device saying, okay, I have four antennas in there. These two are going to my external port. These two are optimized for, let's say, band 40. And these two are my internal antennas and my external antenna ports for band 28. But if you are now working in a place where your device says, I'm on band 40, and I'm going to stay on band 40, connect an external antenna to these two antenna ports, Great, now I have a nice, great antenna for band 28, but band 40 is still being used by the internal antennas. I'm not saying that's what's happening in the night talk. I, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that that's the case with these consumer devices. There are many antennas, and only two of those are routed to the outside. With a device such as the um, uh, Teltonica, any of their models, you have two 4G antennas, and 5G antenna when that comes, comes out as well. They only use these ports. So whatever the Teltonica does goes through these ports. If it's band 28 in the low band, if it's band 40 in the higher bands, if it's band 3, whatever, it always goes through this antenna. And you have 100% full control of what is being routed to from the antenna through to your receiver on this device. To me, that's a huge one. And I left it for last, hoping that um, uh, you will look at this and then it deserves the attention. Uh, or it deserves the yeah intention that it that it that it needs to get anyway that's it for me uh thanks for watching if you have any comments about this if you have any thoughts about this please let me know in the description below add any any value i'm, I'm happy to have this as a conversation starter type of video i'm not making these videos with the intention to say this is it rf shop or david said blah and that's the end of it this is conversation we're all learning how this goes and we need to learn how to use this better and hope that we can continue to learn as as a community what to do about these type of challenges so that we can work with this hopefully eventually work with our manufacturers, both on the antenna side and on the device side, to make sure that things work well. But as I said, at the moment, if I can tell you there's a solution that will work really well, use a Teltonica type device, type, I mean, there are competing devices as well, but the same logic with an external antenna. If you want an external antenna that will solve a connectivity problem for you, take a device that has a dedicated external port that you know this is the port that I want to use. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and look forward to see you again soon. Cheers, bye-bye.